Uh, so I'm Nash Shah, I'm the Member of Parliament for Bradford West and I'm a Member of the Home Affairs Select Committee here in Parliament. Um, for me, because I'm a bit more thick-skinned and uh, I, because of my life experiences, it's kind of like, um, is it, it's, it's not water off, water off a duck's back, but it has to be. Um, because the, the job is much far, far more important than the trolling and the abuse that I get. You know, to be able to have a voice for my constituents outweighs the kind of abuse that I get on a personal level. Um, it's not something that I would, um, uh, would, I, would I reconsider? No, I, I'd still do what I do. Uh, but that's because it's my nature. But should you have to do what I do, uh, should you have to experience that? And the answer is no. no nobody should have to experience that kind of abuse. Well, it is clear from the research that toxic abuse is more leveled towards uh, women than men, and then if you add race to the remix, it's even, it gets a bit more toxic, and then you add religion to the mix, and then it gets a bit more toxic, so there's kind of like a hierarchy, if you like, of who gets most abuse, uh, which is a shame, really, um, but ultimately abuse is abuse, and it's, it's about abuse against women, and, and I see myself as one of the women in Parliament. Um, so, we, we, yes, people have different ways of uh, looking at it, people have different ways of dealing with it, uh, you know, some people have resorted to just not looking at Twitter, just not using Twitter, or you not using social media but again that's part of normal everyday life now so where it's, it's one of the ways that you communicate with your constituents as well um, so yes I'm, I'm not sure about what some people have done but certainly in my case it's just you know you just don't read the notifications and you just uh, put what you need to put out there and now and again I might glance through something or somebody might send me something to retweet and it takes me directly to a link rather than having to go through my Twitter some of it was about whether we should introduce fines uh, for hate speech etc to be removed quickly so we're considering those recommended where we're considering those uh, ideas put forward we've had Twitter Google YouTube um, Facebook all of them uh, in, in between in, into the home first select committee uh, twice now not just once and unfortunately they, they have not done as much as we'd like them to do and is it about legislative change or is it about you know um, more practical things that they need to put in place and the truth is that they need to do more they're not doing enough and if you look at the recent uh, issue where somebody called out you know Jess Phillips called out for um, you know people not to be anonymous when they're making rape threats and then uh, and to not have that anonymous um, egg if you like and then she gets 600 rape threats in a, in a day uh, I'd agree that um, whilst you can, you can and you should be able to remain anonymous online because of, you know, you, you want to do that, the truth is that Twitter and Facebook and Google, etc. need to know who those people are. Uh, because if, you know, there's, there's an element of freedom of speech and freedom of speech has its base, but freedom of speech doesn't allow you to have freedom of abuse. Mm -hmm. And that's the fine line for me. So if abuse is not acceptable, uh, you can have a different opinion on Brexit and uh, troll me all you want because I've got an opinion on it, and that's absolutely fine. But that, that's freedom of speech. You can disagree with my opinion, that's absolutely freedom of speech. But what that doesn't give you a right to do is give me abuse or give anybody as a matter for, for a matter, uh, you know, for that matter, uh, any abuse. And that's where the fine line is, and that's where I think we need to be, is where we, we mentally, can, people want to maintain their anonymity outside but internally, Twitter and Facebook and others need to know where that abuse is coming from. And it will change the whole dynamics of social media abuse if you have to ha go through a verification process. Mm -hmm. It's a responsibility of users, it's a responsibility of tech companies, and it's a responsibility for the government. So we as legislators have an obligation to make sure we put the laws in place which protect our communities. Um, tech companies need to be mindful of how they use their uh, platforms and what they give that, what, what they allow to be on their platforms. And people have, a, have to take responsibility for their actions. And we have to foster a community which is offline as well as online, which is about peace and harmony and tolerance of each other and acceptance of different different views. Uh, and that does not give anybody to abuse. You, you can't just walk in the street, you know, you can't just walk in the street and shout abuse at somebody and decide to smack them in the face just because you want to. And why should you be able to do it anonymously on Twitter? And, you know, because it is a virtual second world. It's a second world, which is a parallel world to, to the mainstream world of you and I sat here talking and ha having a virtual conversation online. And if you look at the police for the, for policing for the future, so we're also doing an inquiry, inquiry into policing uh, for the future, and some of the dynamics that are impacting on those investigations. So there was a time where you'd have to be in a physical presence for the police. You know, for somebody, would, I'd threaten somebody, you'd threaten somebody, it'd have to be a physical threat or on the phone. But now you can do it over Facebook, you can do it over social media, you can threaten to rape somebody over social media. And the whole dynamic of policing and responses to that has changed. So there's a huge amount of work to be done and we're very far behind of where we need to be.